Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game, another one, back on the 49 Chev. In the last video, I replaced all the back end of this trunk lid, but by doing so, I made it tight on this panel here. I, the seams were nice. On a lot of old cars, 50s and 40s cars, the body seams were never, ever good on them. They weren't perfect like the modern day car. But I'm going to show you a little technique that I've been using for years now to ad address that issue, and I've done it on a lot of old cars, and I'm going to do it on this one here, and I'm going to show you how I did it. So stick around. So back on the 49 fleet line. In the last video, I repaired all the back section of this trunk lid. Uh, thanks for lots of uh, great responses on that. A lot of people enjoyed that video. Uh, it's the video before this one. On this one here now, we're going to get into the body seams. I talked about a few issues that I had with this one here. Down here, I noticed it was getting tight along here. And over here, there was a tightness here as well. Now on this car here, there's a number of issues with door seams. Namely, Dunning's lining up there and they chopped the roof to fit this that has to be addressed and the seam is up and down in and out you can see it's extremely tight here and it's extremely wide down here this is the type of stuff i got to deal with and up front here you can see what i got to work with here now it just fades away to nothing here so i got a lot of work to do the bottom side on the rockers is not bad but it's going to have to be addressed the other side is the same way uh, but the other side of the door fits pretty good over here the alignment is not bad here right and the fit up here I'm not going to be concerned about nothing up above here yet because I still don't know what I'm doing with the roof on this car but as you come down here you can see it gets extremely tight here going down through it and of course they grinded it off that much on the bottom they got holes put on the inside of the rockers but over here then they got the living daylights butchered out of it Trying to weld the seam back into the edge of the door. I was never fussy on welding edges of doors, okay? For closing up seams. Um, there's, uh, I've always done it another way. I just found it was a lot more work doing your edges of your doors than it was to actually do the panel itself. Now, the issue I got with this car here, is I got no movement. This is a full custom. These fenders used to bolt onto these cars. They're now welded on, okay? They're permanently mounted on this car. Look. They're permanently mounted on. They got a lot of custom features. This used to come down straight across here. All this has been welded up. Down on the bottom here, the entire fender is welded onto the rocker panel. And then you get around the front. The front, let's not even go there, but all the front of it's all welded on up here. I got a lot of work I got to do up here. Back here is what I'm going to do first. I want to open up this little one here a little tiny bit. And I want to open this up along here. It gets a little bit tight in through right here. It's tight there and then it goes wide here so i'm going to dress these here get these finished get so this back section is done and then i'll move on to the doors okay this side here is much the same way if you can see here the distance from here here you can see this is tucked out here that's the high spot there and it's and it's good back here and it's good from here on from here on up okay so you know what i'm going to do here now is i'm going to straighten this up and there you have it what did i do there you can see I got a nice gap going down through there now, and I got the seam fixed. What did I do? Let me show you. Now over here, we got the same issue going on. You can see the gap up here, and then it gets tight, and then it gets wide down here again. What we're going to do here now is a simple little thing that I've been doing for a lot of years. Uh, I've always found it a lot easier. A lot of guys would grind and weld the edges of these, okay? I never was never into the edge of the panels welding them up. Because then you had to do a lot of work on the inside of them. What I like to do is I like to move this lip here. This section here. I like to move it this way. Okay. How I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take a zip blade. Cut down through there. Tap it over. And re-weld it. As simple as that.
So now you can see, nice simple gap. Looks clean down through there now, nice gap. What I'll do now is I'll just go and I'll weld all this up here and I'll grind it all down, nice and flush. It's a lot easier to work it on the edges, sometimes like this here, um, than it is to actually get into this here because you've got to change the alignment and stuff. And a lot of the openings you're going to find on old cars are not good, okay? Before I go any further, i got to point out and let everybody know that modern day cars have a lot of good body lines on them, okay? They're all designed and built a lot better uh, as they than what they were back in the day when you buy an old car from the 30s 40s and 50s you're going to find there's going to be issues and the one thing about them old 50s cars is they did not fit good okay the body lines never fit very well uh these old chevys they never ever they're always title on the back here they were never uh and they had a nice gap on them usually anywhere there was a transition from here to here, this usually got tight on a lot of the vehicles. Trucks are really bad for it, okay? The Fords, the Chevs, the Dodges, all the same thing. The gaps are usually really tight uh, up around sections. I used to have to rework these sections here in order to get everything to work right, right? I just want to point that out because uh, when you're restoring an old 50s car, truck, whatever, and you start bolting panels on it and realizing how come I can't get my door seams right, it's because they never fit right in the first place. So there it is all welded up. Okay, I'll put a bit of heat in it, get some heat in the edge of it. Problem I'm having with this car here is there's been a lot of work been done on this car over the years, and I'm finding these edges are thin in spots, and I'm actually having troubles blowing holes in places and stuff like that. And remember, I put a tail section in here, and it came across here. So I had to, you know, watch it, and I noticed it was a bit thin in a few spots, so I just went ahead and welded it up anyway. So now that I got it all welded up like that, I'm going to grind it off, same as before, grind it flat this way, grind it flat this way, and then get it so that I got a straight line there that I'm happy with, and then I'll roll my edge off. So let's get this grind down here now and here and see what it looks like. So you can see I grind it all down and let me get it open here. And you're looking along the edge here now, you can see that it's gonna to have to be welded up again. A few spots there got a tack weld in. All I'm worried about is getting a nice edge like this here now, all down through here, and then I'll roll it off. So I'll get that welded up now and grind down. So I got it all grind flat here, and I got it flat on the inside as well. Got to grind it this way, and I gotta grind this way. Now that I got a nice edge and I welded it on there again. I'm going to turn around and just come in now, roll this edge off, so I get a nice seam like the rest of it up here, nice roll over. It's gone sharp here, and it rolls over here, and it's sharp through here. So I'll roll it off there now. There it is, all rolled off, nice seam down through there now. I'm going to work on down here now, getting the one here straightened away. And uh, when I get that done, we'll go get started on the door. Now in through here, about from about right here over to here, that's gone narrow there, and over here from about right here to about right here somewhere, it's all gone narrow there. I'll do the same process here, I'll cut this here. One of the advantages of this is I made all this up, so this here is welded on the inside here, so I got lots of strength there. So I'll cut this in through here, tap this down. A lot of people will just turn around sometimes and start tapping edges. What ends up happening, the metal got to go somewhere, so it's going to bulge up here, you have a high spot here, then your panels won't line up this way. By cutting it, and all you're doing is removing metal, moving it down, and where you're welding it along the edge, you don't have a lot of work to do to it. A lot of times you can do this type of work, and you can keep your body work and all that type of stuff to a minimum along them edges, right? So, I'll get this cut now, and uh, we'll start getting this one here looking good. One thing you'll find that when you cuts it, okay, I got this cut in through here, and then you start tapping it back, the gap is going to close up on your things, on your, uh, where you got it cut, because you got the thickness of the blade, and here's what you got done. Now, I look at this here, I still want to tap it back some more, so I'm going to take the zip blade again and cut through it again, and I'll just keep tapping it back, cutting it, tapping it back, and cutting it until I'm happy with the seam. Now I'm happy with the machine going along here now, but it still needs to be moved over here. So what I'll do is I'll start welding this from this side here and work my way across. 
feel I'm happy with.
away here. I had the welder laid up on top of this here. I haul back on it and haul the top off the welder. It's down on that somewhere. Oh, God. I was making such good progress, too. Gotta go find that now. Where did that go to, now? Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. There's always something in it. I guess you invest in a few more in. It's always funny. Like, I've done this with nuts and bolts and everything. Like, you know, you drop something, something falls off. It's not going to land on the floor in plain sight. It's got to run and hide. I think everything got a mind of its own. And when it falls off an object, it's got to run and find a coolest place to hide. Because I'm telling you, what a time it has losing stuff on the floor here. I never find nothing. Everything disappears on this one. I'm going to have to go over and search through my toolbox, see if I can find another one, because I'm not going to root through this now. See if I can come across another one. <laughs> Let's try this again. Some of you already know what this is, but for uh, you other guys, leave down in the comments what you think this is. It's a homemade blowgun, but what's it made from? There you have it. That's basically it. That's all you do with them. Uh, working your way around. The key to this here is not to make the, the, the cut too big. Like if you've got a whole seam you got to do, just do a section of the seam at a time because it'll throw everything out of whack and the panels will start to move. Much the same process. When you cut too much of this here, this is going to want to move even now. And so like if you took four or five inches at a time, cut it, adjusted it, and just don't weld it right to the end. And then just turn around work from there and work your way across because that's what i got to do right here now so i'll do the same process here and i'll cut that across there 
tap it down. I'll get to about right here somewhere with it till I'm happy with that. I'll move on till I'm happy till I get all the way over here. I had to do, remake this whole back section. I really had nothing to go by because the trunk lid was all beat up on it. Now that I got a good trunk lid and I got a good lip on the trunk lid, now I can actually make both of it uniform, right? So I'm going to go ahead now and get this here started. I'm going to cut this here and tap it down and start welding it. case is like this here, I want to open it up. I have to grind it and tap it down and now I'm out of room. The metal is after closing up. Just work my way across. You can see the way the gap starts to close up here. I'm not going to weld anything over here. So I'll work my way across. It usually stays away about an inch or so because this here is starting to taper up from here. So when I cut this here, this will tap down. I'll be able to weld it here then. So I went ahead now and I got it all cut. And I got a nice seam there now going right along. Uh, like as you're working your way across, just take your time. Start from one end, work your way across, get your gaps right. You may have to come back and do a spot. I had to come back here. It was still a bit tight here, so I had to cut two of these, tap it down some more. And when you're happy with it, that the gap looks good for you, just go back in and start spot welding it all. Usually on these edges, you've got a lot of uh, strength, so you can actually run a bit of heat into it. So I usually welds an inch, skips an inch, welds an inch, skips an inch, right? But keep cooling it down. You don't want to get too much heat in this panel, right? So I'm going to go ahead now, get this all welded up.
So there you have it. I got a nice seam across there now. I like having my seams a little bit larger than usual because when you go to do body work and everything, you got a bit of room, okay? Uh, you can actually, because you're going to have to feel your edge and stuff like that, so you, you got a lot of room there to actually do your uh, your filler work with it as well. Um, you know, you can get carried away with this. I can sit down and metal finish all this and spend hours at it getting a perfect seam so you don't have to put no filler in it. Yeah, you can do that, but uh, it's time consuming. It takes up a lot of time. And this is basically, I'm doing this car so it can be get ready for filler, right? But that's um, basically all I ever do with body seams when I'm trying to adjust things. I prefer to adjust the body than I do the panel itself. A lot of people have like welded on edges and stuff like that. Now, sometimes you've got to weld edges and I have a little spot right here, I think it is, that I got to uh, weld a bit of material right here to get the shape out of it. All I'm going to do is just run a bit of welding along the edge here and then it'll be fine. But, uh, you know, going up along there, Oh, that's good. But, uh, but that's the extent of it. You're going to come across this when you're doing old muscle, older cars. Um, especially sometimes even when you get them aftermarket panels and you got to put them on the car, you may have to do the same process again because sometimes you'll have the panel on it. A lot of times the fitment of the door and the fender will always be an issue. So you got to, this is one way of uh, addressing it, is do it this way. I've done this process on uh, cars that were butchered up and welded up and the doors never closed proper and I actually made the door seams fit the doors um, because whoever welded the bottom of the cars, they were all welded up. This is stuff I did years ago and, you know, I've got to the point sometimes where I've actually had to weld strips in here to close up gaps. That's how bad some of the cars were over the years. But, you know, it's nice to have a nice uniform gap on it and stuff like that. Don't go filling it and welding rods like what's done on the door over here. Okay. See, I'm not fussy on that. I'm probably going to end up having to keep with, stay with it. But the way that's all welded up there, I don't like that. And, uh, like, I would have split this over here more, tapped this back, and then got a nicer seam and everything on it. I'll get into that later. Um, I'm trying to get some work done here in the shop, namely... Wendy's Mustang. I've been at that all week, but I wanted to get a video out for you guys, so I figured I'd do up a quick little video. Uh, I had to straighten up the seams on this here, and I figured it'd be a good time to show you guys how I turn around and do body seams and uh, get them all straightened away. So, hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to leave this one here. I hope the tips were good, and until next time. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, hit like and share. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe down the bottom of the page. If you want to donate to the channel, down below there's a button, super thanks button. If you want to click on that, it'll take you through the motions of making donations to the channel. Greatly appreciate it. We also got merchandise. Pop over to fitziesfabrications.com and check out our merchandise. We have hoodies, sweaters, t-shirts, and stickers. Lots to choose from. Thanks for watching. I'm going to show you that I had some seams that were a bit close that I didn't like. So I'm going to readjust them seams, recalibrate them seams, cut them seams, chop them seams. I'm going to recalibrate the seams around this trunk lid. So stick around. The little pucker, look.